there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do a landscape and we're gonna work on this long skinny paper. This is six inches by 18 inches. It's uh, Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper and I couldn't resist this long skinny paper. It was at uh, Cheap Joe's for like $4 on sale and I just couldn't, uh, I don't even know if that was on sale. That might've been the regular place price in the catalog, but I just, uh, I felt like I wanted to try something new and that is what. I got now yeah I could core I could cut down a big sheet but I decided that I just wanted to try this because it looked like fun all right so I just did a little study of the landscape they're going to do today and um, I'm working from a photograph by Robin Lovelock from the website paintmyphoto.ning.com and it's a it's a wonderful website it's a group of uh, painters and photographers the photographers um, post their photos for painters to paint and um, it's just a lot of fun I do encourage you to check it out if you're looking for a source of good reference photos that you can um, reproduce without you can you can paint them and you don't have to worry about copyright or anything like that you can't you know reproduce their you can paint their photos and you're fine to do that yeah there we go okay so what I'm gonna do is actually sketch on my uh, my scene here with a watercolor crayon I'm going about two-thirds of the way up and just kind of putting like a rolling hill roll 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 rolling hill all right and um there's this kind of really um, bold, like, kind of shape line in there. And please, I'll put a link below the photo, and you can go check out uh, below the photo. Jeez, below the video description, and you can check out this photo yourself. Um, you can print it off or open it up on your screen or whatever, so you can see the actual uh, the actual photograph. Um, I don't think I have room to show that on the screen alongside my tutorial. So why don't you do that if you're very curious? I really recommend you do because it's a lovely photo. And then there's these little. Uh, it's a field of lavender. It's called Tasmanian lavender fields, and it's this cool. Um, photograph of these beautiful lavender fields obviously and so I'm just sketching it on with this um, watercolor crayon because I it will help me kind of block in some shapes and values while I'm at it all right and I've got some trees over here so I'll make sure I get that indication of trees okay now I'm also working with a different brush this is a um, half inch Princeton Neptune Oval Wash, also known as a cat's tongue, and I've wanted to try this brush for quite a while. I thought I was using a Neptune. I thought I had ordered a Neptune. It was a different Princeton brush, and it was just a regular synthetic. This is a synthetic squirrel, so if you want the, the feel of a squirrel brush, but you don't want to support, you know, the fur trade, um, then this is a great... Um, substitute. It's really nice. It's not as uh, stiff and snappy as a regular synthetic brush or it's probably a Kalinsky sable but I think it probably does replicate a squirrel brush fairly well. Um, I don't buy the natural bristle like that the sables and squirrels because I don't want to support the fur trade and you know I do have hog bristle brushes um, they're byproducts of the meat trade, which, you know, my, my family eats meat, I don't, but, you know, I figure, well, I'm in the hole anyway, I might as well use the whole animal. Um, so here I've got some ultramarine blue, and I'm just adding it to the top of my paper and working it, just kind of letting it bleed down. All right, just kind of carry it down. Don't worry about that brown. If you sketched it in, you can sketch it in with a pencil. Seriously, you don't have to use a watercolor crayon. I wanted you to be able to see it because I know sometimes when I sketch with a pencil, you can't see it. And I feel like I, on my little test there, my little study, I um, I actually did that on camera, but I kind of got halfway through and I lost some of, I I got things in the wrong spots, I guess. Let's just call a spade a spade here. I got, I messed up. And uh, I thought this would help me keep on track a little better. Now I'm going to blot off some clouds remember you always blot never rub your paper and this is kind of a cloudy sky so i just want to get a few nice white spots in there and now i'm going to while the paper is still a little damp i'm going to mix up my ultramarine blue i'm going to add some yellow ochre to it and then i'm also going to add some of that light red i'm going to get myself a nice natural kind of grayish color so I'm not you could use burnt sienna I'm using the light red just because I felt like I wanted something a little bit different today but you know burnt sienna if you don't have light red that'll be fine fine and cherry wine all right so I'm putting in some of these darker clouds here there's kind of the the bottoms the shadowed parts of our clouds leave some of the leave some of the white in there 
I like to mix my grays. You could use Payne's Gray if you, if you want to, but I find that if I can mix my grays from what I already have on my paper, then my composition's a little bit stronger and it seems harmonious, you know? It doesn't seem like a, like a, that gray doesn't go there, you know? Seems like it fits. And I'm just gonna soften up some areas. This brush is a little floppier than I'm used to. It's nice to try different things, just like a different side of the paper, you know, even if it's just cutting the paper, you already have it a different size. Just cool to try try some different stuff. And you know, this is a 20 minute painting, so I'm not gonna get too fussy about anything, really. All right, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, I want to um, do these clouds back there. I think I'm gonna let that sky dry a little bit. So I think I'll come over in here. I got some sap green and some lemon yellow. I've already mixed it. I'm just gonna throw in some of the uh, shapes I see in the background here. These are lavender fields, so I just wanna make sure I get I, it's pretty abstract at this point. Whoops, let me go see what she's barking at. All right, nothing serious, just some kids wandering down the road. I am going to just kind of put a little bit of this light right in here. So these these blurry abstract shapes here in the background are just, um, you know, kind of lavender fields in the distance, I believe. Now, that's kind of the, the funny thing about working on with somebody else's photograph is that you don't exactly know what's going on in the picture. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can see what you can see, but there'll be stuff that you can't really tell what's happening. So that's kind of, you know, it's it shows you why it's important to to take your own reference photos and to uh, get out there and paint from life whenever you can. But it's also, it's also different. It just challenges you in a different way, I think. Okay. Gives you a nice respect for those people that take photos. I think it's so nice that um, that the photographers over there share their uh, their skill and their talent so freely. I've just been, I, I joined the group like last night, so I haven't really contributed anything yet. Um, I won't be contributing photographs, I'll tell you that, mine aren't very good. Um, but I think it's really, really a cool thing. So first impressions of this brush is that it holds lots of water and I really like that. It's a little uh, different getting used to, but I like that too, really. I like I like having something different now and again. I should have, I, I uh, was out of painter's tape, so uh, I didn't tape my paper down and I kind of wanted to use, I wanted to go right out to the edges of my paper as well. So I might have, I'm gonna have a little buckling. I know I am Strathmore, you know, it's not, it's it's only 140 pound and I do have a really long piece of it so it's not going to be quite as uh as flat as some of my other papers but you know what I know that you can go to the store and you can find Strathmore paper and you know what you know it's going to give you an accurate representation it's going to give you you know an accurate idea of what you can do with the supplies just at a regular craft store Okay, so it's my, my sky is still not quite completely dry. I'm going to go in here with some more of this lavender. I'm going to get some of the, the uh, fields blocked in here. And this is a mix of mauve and ultramarine blue. I'll put a list of the colors I used under the video too in the video description if you want to check that out. That way you can make sure your mixes are the same as mine. But if you don't have the, the same colors on your palette, please don't let that stop you. Mix the col colors from what you have use totally different colors. It's really more, it's more important that you paint than you have exactly what I have. It's more important that you just experiment and use what you have. You know, don't let lack of supplies stop you from, from doing any of this. I'm going to grab a little yellow ochre. Yeah, see, you can kind of see how my brush doesn't, doesn't hold a, a tall point like it would if I was using a synthetic brush. So it's just one of the, uh, you know, one of the trade-offs of using a you know, it's it is a synthetic brush, but I mean, you know, using is a trade off of using a natural hair brush or a uh, uh, one that's supposed to emulate natural hair. It's just a little different. Uh, not good, not bad. Everyone's gonna have their own their own favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and liquefy this little patch here while I'm at it. All right, and now I think I will go ahead. Well, actually, why don't I put a little bit of that uh, lemon yellow and sap green just right in the foreground here. Let's get some of that in there so we're not just staring at the 
plain paper there. A little more of that mauve and ultramarine mix. There. Okay, I think that's pretty good for now. Actually, you know what? I can go in because this did have a little bit more of that brighter red. I'm wondering what these little plants are growing in here. They remind me of blueberries. How blueberry fields, like if you ever see the blueberry fields after uh, harvest, they have that bright red, blazing red almost. That's what it reminds me of. Um, and we'll throw in a little more sap over here. I really urge you to go check out the, this uh, woman's photographs. Robin Lovelock, she is very talented. And um, then you can also see the photo I'm going by, so you're not kind of like, oh my gosh, Lindsay's totally lost her mind. What in the heck is she trying to paint it with? Because <laughs> I can, I, I tend to um, approach landscapes very abstractly. Alright, a little bit more of that mauve. I wake up my computer there. Wake up, computer. I'm going to sort of throw that in there, too. I don't care if some of those colors mix and mingle, because I'm just kind of basing it in right now. Refine a little bit later. Alright, so we have a couple mountains back here. And I'm going to paint the furthest one away first. Let's do some of that English red or light red. It's your redder. It's like burnt sienna, but it's more red. And ultramarine blue, and we're going to go in and paint these far away mountains. And I'm going to just try to liquefy that uh, crayon that I drew it on with. It was just a Caran d'Ache watercolor crayon. It was a very burnt sienna-ish looking color. You don't have to reload your brushes often with these, which is kind of nice. Uh, you might want to use, I, I just wanted to see if I could do this all with one brush just because I really want to put this brush to its paces and give it a, give it a good whirl. And then this other one here, it's much more blue in the photograph. It's much darker. I don't know if I really wanted that blue. So let's see. I think maybe I'll add some of that mauve to it so I can warm it up a little bit. I, don't, I just didn't want it as blue as it was. And... That's artistic license. You can, you can tweak things a little bit. All right, this um, this paper does not absorb as much as an arch arches does. It definitely wants to uh, has sizing on it, which is handy for lifting. That needs to go in there a little further. Now that I'm paying a little more attention to the photo, I can see that. And I just want to make sure that I did liquefy all that watercolor crayon, or as much as I could. Um, okay, I think I need to let this dry, and I'm going to pause the camera, dry it, and we'll be right back. Alright, we are back. I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue, and take some burnt sienna, mix it all up, get a nice pine green kind of color here, nice dark evergreen color. And there is a bunch of evergreen trees in front of this mountain, and I'm just going to wiggle waggle those in. Dap, 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 dap. Oh, yes, there we go. So very easy to paint our little pine trees. tap a tap a tap Well, I imagine there's some sort of evergreen. They might not be pine, because this is not for Maine. I don't know if we grow lavender in Maine. I've never really seen any. I think I grew something. Was it lavender? What's something at one point? Probably wasn't me. My husband grew it. I do not have the skill in the gardening area. Tap. Some more of these little guys in here. Probably these were planted for soil erosion purposes. Because there's lots of lavender fields. I would think that would get, they would get really eroded. But then again, what do I know? I am not a botanist. I'm going to put a few more little clumps of trees in there. Make them a little bit bigger as you come forward. Like if you have a clump or something that looks like a, a tree, you can make them a little bit bigger if they're individual ones as you come forward. And we'll tap a few in there. But remember, background is background, and don't worry about it too much. Don't try to, you know, make it too detailed or it's going to look like foreground, and then it's going to make your picture look flat. Okay? All right, so I also want to get a little bit of uh, 
some darker areas in here. Again, I'm treating that background very abstractly, just putting little dabs where I see dabs of color. I don't want to put something there that's not there. I want to um, just picking up a little lemon yellow and then getting in that dirty green there. I just want to, there goes that dog again. Boy, it's, it's a beautiful day. So all the neighborhood kids have just gotten home from school um, and they, my kids are still at sports, but, and they're all like, you know, riding their bikes and everything. And my dog is going, what's that noise? Hey, there's kids around. Why aren't they playing with me? Like vicious golden retriever. Nice thing about having a golden retriever. You don't have to worry about them out, you know, out in your yard. I like to leave my, uh, cellar door, my studio's in my basement. I like to leave my, uh, my little studio door open so that my dog Hazel can go in and out as she fancies, and she does. Um, uh, I think I have a little cut that color right, right there. Let's put some of that in there. Yeah! Alright, I need a little bit of that light red, I think. I need something to just give me a little pop. A little bit of light red there. English red or light red, they're very similar. And I also want some of that over here because I see it in the picture and it looks awfully nice. Yes, it does. All right, now we're really going to start painting the foreground. I think the background's good. The uh, thing about the Strathmore paper also is that you splash water on it and you blot it. It will probably lift up the paint underneath, so just watch out for your splashes. I gotta stand up. I've been sitting down. It's very, very awkward. I gotta stand up. I can't see my picture very well sitting down. Alrighty now, let's grab a little mauve. Move a mauve. What do you say? What do you say? Mauve. Move. I say mauve. Sometimes I have to think about it. What do I say? Alright. Tap, tap, tap. -a. So one brush. How many colors have we used? We haven't used that many colors. I have quite a frugal painting. I'm just using my, um, Actually, using the sex, I know it would fit on my desk. It would fit on my table with my computer that I'm looking at the photo on and uh, with my paper and other stuff. That's that's re the reason why. I, I do love my, I usually use M-Gram paints, but there's so many good paints out there, really. I mean, the, the thing is, just paint. Just paint. Don't worry about what brand you're using, especially if you're a beginner. Just paint, you know. Once you get through that first set of paints, I'm telling you what, you're going to be a good painter. And, you know, then go ahead and splurge, don't, because sometimes when you buy really expensive paints, it makes you feel, um, kind of afraid to use them because, gosh, you've spent so much money, you don't want to waste it. Um, I'm going to grab some more of the mauve and blue, mauve, ultramarine blue. Yeah, so the most important thing, if you want to learn how to paint, is just to paint. All right, so I'm just tapping, so I can get this nice, uh, this nice shape just by tapping with the edge of my brush. Got a lot of paint. You hold a lot of paint with this brush, which is really, really nice. Grab some more of that. We're going to be using our credit card scraper in a minute, so just don't have that handy. You're going to want it. Some nice bright mauve. And really, there's not much left to this painting to do. All right, I want some sap green, so grab a grab a good amount of sap green. My sap green thing wants to hop out of its little spot on my palette, and I'm just gonna throw a little bit in amongst the wet paint in here. Some in between in these little rows back here. All right, now. Grab a little bit of lemon yellow just to brighten it up. Put some of that in there. And then we're going to scrape. I'm going to scrape up all these little grasses of lavender. Scrape, 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 scrape. Oh, look at that. We're almost at 20 minutes. All right, so what I want to do is let this dry. We're going to come back in for the last final touches on this painting. So hang on just a moment. All right, final touches. I blotted a little bit above the scraping lines that I made. I've mixed up a nice big uh, well of my purple, and I'm just tapping on the colors here. The more of those purple lavenders are up towards the front, and that is all there is to this very simple watercolor of lavender fields. Check out the link below to find that photograph. Uh, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you liked this 
easy uh, landscape tutorial and you want to see more. And um, thanks so much for watching. And as always, happy crafting.